Hey guys, it's Amber. May is Mental Health Awareness Month and one in five adults in the United States experience a mental health condition in a given year. With quarantine from COVID, it has really exacerbated things for people and so lots of us have gotten together to do a mental health awareness hop to raise awareness, provide resources for help, and to make sure that people do not feel alone. As you can see here, I'm going to be doing some Zentangle and I'm going back to my roots and actually using a Zentangle tile today. I can't remember the last time I used one of these tiles. Um, it's three and a half by three and a half inches and it's on Fabriano paper. It's great to Zentangle on. This is an original Zentangle tile and the reason I haven't used these in years is because I've really switched over to tangling on my cards. I have two pins here, the Pigma Micron 01 and a Pigma Pen 05. I have a pencil, a white charcoal pencil, which I don't end up using, and a Tortillon. So very minimal supplies needed in order to tangle. And I start off each tangle by, if, I, if I'm using a tile, by putting four dots, one in each corner. This is gonna help me put a border on my tile. Now, I really prefer a border, but of course you can skip this step if you want your artwork to go all the way to the edge of the page. I do like to have a partial white border. In most cases, I end up hopping over the border in some areas. So I'm gonna be using the 05 pen today. It's a little bit thicker and I find it's easier for you guys to see. I'm also one that really likes a bold outline. The first pattern that I'm going to be doing, and I'll have all of the information on these patterns listed down below. I'm only using three patterns today. And this one is a hybrid. So the original pattern is called Dude, D-E-W-D. -E and this is a hybrid because I'm using Mooka as the base of this. So it's Mooka in a Dude pattern, if you will. This is very much an S stroke and curvy kind of tangle, which are my favorites. I really am drawn towards the organic tangles. So I will, you'll get to see, I would say 90% of the tangling in this video. I do speed some of it up once it becomes repetitive, but anytime I'm showing you the pattern for the first time, it will be at normal speed so that you can tangle along and learn from it. And then if at any time you feel like this video is too fast or too slow, you can alter the speed of this video in your YouTube settings. So just click on the little gear icon in the bottom right corner and change up the speed of the video. The next pattern I'm going to do is called Bunzo and for the most part, I would say my tangles look a little bit different than the original tangle pattern. And that's just because over time, I kind of alter it and make it my own. Each person, the way that they tangle a pattern, it's going to look a little bit different. And I think that that is one of the nice, unique parts of Zentangle. I will have lots of resources for mental health down in the description below. So be sure to check those out if that's something that you're interested in. Several of us are sharing our stories um, and maybe some people are going to get more detailed than others. I'll share a little bit as to how I got into Zentangle and because it really was linked to my health and what I was going through at the time. So if this is not something that you're interested in hearing, I encourage you to mute the volume, maybe put on a little bit of music. Um, it can be really difficult for people to talk about mental health and awareness and share their story. So I encourage you as you go through the hop, if you are listening to people's stories to definitely, you know, be respectful and kind. It's hard to put your story out there. And I think a lot of people are being brave by doing that. So I got into Zentangle when my health was at an all-time low. Um, I had a lot of multi-system symptoms and I had been to nine doctors and no one could figure out what the issues were and I was so unbelievably stressed out and just had se 
severe fatigue, mood swings, but then I also had muscle weakness to the point where it was difficult to walk up the stairs. Um, I had a job where I was driving hours on end, standing up all day, and it was difficult to get through the day. Not only that, I would come home and immediately fall asleep. I couldn't even stay awake, awake to cook dinner for my husband or my kids and um, joint pain, joint weakness, just all systems go. It seemed like every system of my body was on alert and in a fight or flight kind of pattern. And it was just incredibly stressful. So I was at the craft store with my daughters getting them some activities to do and I came across a Zentangle book. If you're not familiar with Zentangle, you can learn more about it at Zentangle.com. But what it is, is a meditative type of drawing. And the premise behind it is that you learn these very simple patterns. Each Zentangle pattern has about one to five steps. Once you know those steps, you don't have to think about the next thing that you're going to draw. Because of that, you can just fall into this relaxing meditative state because you're just kind of going on autopilot. You don't have to think about the next thing like if you were drawing a house or a portrait or um, something like that. It's just really easy to relax and kind of lose yourself in the drawing. And at the time, it was life-changing. It, it helped me manage my stress um, that I was going through at the time and the fatigue. It just helped me center and focus in a way that I wasn't able to do prior to getting into Zentangle. I was so inspired by how much it had changed my life that I became a certified Zentangle teacher in 2017. And I've been doing it since then. And I would say I started card making about three years ago and I kind of got out of the practice. I was adding Zentangle to my cards. That's how I initially got into card making is a friend of mine asked me to create a set of Zentangle Christmas cards for her. And I got out of the practice and recently I've really kind of put my focus back on Zentangle and watercolor. If you've seen my Zentangle swatch book series, that's, you know, that's me trying to get back into Zentangle and then also learning about my watercolors and swatching the colors. So I am sponsoring one of the giveaways for our hop today and I'll link, um, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner so that you can see the digital stamp set, but the lucky winner will get that digital stamp set, which is the Zen watercolor swatch stamp set that I created to coordinate with my swatch book series. So while Zentangle really helped quite a bit, I still have flares and um, I'm actually currently having one right now. And when that happens, my life is very much like a roller coaster. Um, it's so up and down with the fatigue and the emotions and, you know, one of the things that I was recently telling my husband, which I think is so true with all of the graphics and the informations that we're sharing and the hashtag not alone is that it feels very isolating and very alone because I feel like most people don't understand what it is that I'm going through or how I feel and just that it can change. I could be completely fine on one day and just a wreck the next day and not able to focus and not able to string my thoughts together or remember what I was doing or um, you just don't feel like yourself at all and it's very difficult to function. So um, I appreciate Natasha and Colleen putting this blog hop together as well as all of our other participants because I think it's really important for people to understand that they're not alone and that there are resources out there that can help. And it's so important to have those people that you can reach out to, especially if you can find people who do have an understanding of what you're going through. So that's what this hop is all about. And as I said, there's quite a few of us that are sharing our experience in hopes that we can help be part of the change to kind of destigmatize 
um, mental health issues and, and other types of health issues too that might be contributing to that. And with that, I'm going to stop talking about it before I get too emotional and we'll talk a little bit more about the Zentangle here. So you can see that I've just weaved these patterns in and out of each other. The third pattern that I did that I'm shading right now is called Huggins. And really you can add, you know, I've added these little triangles to the center of it, but you can add any kind of patterns that you want in the center. I mean, the possibilities are endless for how you want to embellish that pattern. It's a great pattern because it has those large wide open spaces that you can do a lot with. It's quite rare that I just do a black and white Zentangle tile anymore. Um, I normally color them. So whether that is with watercolor or color pencils, or maybe I'm actually tangling on an alcohol ink panel or card or even an ink smush background. So here I'm just adding some graphite to the parts that overlap and then blending that out with a paper stump or a tortillon. Here's where I was saying I like to have a border around it so you can see that some of my patterns went off the edge there and I like the look of that I like when it pops out of one side of the border here and I wanted to thicken that up a little bit so I'm just using another line for that and then one of the enhancements of the Zentangle method of drawing is to round the corners like this this is something I love to do I did it on all of the mucha because it adds more contrast. I really crave lots of contrast, whether that's in my card making or Zentangle or anything else that I'm doing. I think contrast is really what draws the eye into the project, whether that's Zentangle or like I said, watercolor. I think you really need that high contrast to make it interesting. One of the last things that you wanna do with your Zentangle is add your chop or your little signature. So for me, I kind of draw a little teardrop and here I messed it up a little bit and made that D too thick, but basically it's my initials ARD inside of a little raindrop there because my middle name is Rain. And I decided that the Huggins needed a little something extra. So I'm adding an aura line around the triangles and then two dots in between them. So that just adds a little extra something. It is essential for everyone to prioritize their self-care and make sure that they are staying connected with family and friends. And I've added a couple slides here at the end so that you have some resources. Be sure to join us on the Instagram hop for more information on the resources and I'll have some links and more information in the description below. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you soon with more inspiration. Mm -hmm.